today we will discuss about the explanation of the certain mcqs of the chemotherapy and how we derive to that answer hope this will be useful to you first and foremost is which of the following agents acts through the inhibition of synthesis of bacterial cell wall there are different mechanisms of the action of antimicrobial agents like inhibition of the bacterial protein synthesis inhibition of the certain enzymes like dna kinase inhibition of the cell wall synthesis okay here the options are doxycycline ciprofloxacin ampicillin and erythromycin doxycycline is a tetracycline group of the drug and they act by inhibiting the bacterial protein synthesis ciprofloxacin is a fluoroquinolone it acts by inhibiting the dna kinase enzyme erythromycin is a macrolide antibiotic it also acts through the inhibition of synthesis of protein and and beta lactam antibiotics they all are having one common property and that is inhibition of bacterial cell wall synthesis and ampicillin is a penicillin group of drug it is an extended spectrum penicillin so the answer is ampicillin second which of the following is not a broad spectrum antibiotic tetracycline doxycycline streptomycin and chloramphenicol now tetracyclines as a group of the drug which includes tetracycline doxycycline chlorotetracycline oxytetracycline tetracycline and many more okay so these are the broad spectrum second thing is chloramphenicol is also a broad spectrum but streptomycin it is an amino glycoside group of the drug and it is having a very narrow spectrum so the answer is streptomycin topically used sulfonamide for the treatment of trachoma conjunctivitis is here nowadays sulfonamides are not used because of the resistance they are used in the combination with other agents also but there are certain agents which are used topically like silver sulfadiazine and mefenide these are used for burns sulfacetamide sodium yes it is used for trachoma conjunctivitis and sulfadoxin it is not used topically it is used systemically along with the combination of pyrimethamine sulfadoxin plus pyrimethamine it is used in the treatment of malaria so the answer is sulfacetamide sodium which of the following ratio in plasma of trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole leads to optimal pharmacological action you all know that it is a fixed dose fda approved combination sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim these drugs when these two drugs are combined they are having supra additive synergistic action but in a particular ratio in the dosage form the ratio ideal ratio is 5 is to 1 that is sulfamethoxazole 5 and trimethoprim 1 but here the question asked is not in the dosage form but in the plasma so the, in the plasma the ideal ratio should be sulfamethoxazole 20 is to trimethoprim 1 and to achieve this concentration in the plasma these drugs are given in a ratio of 5 is to one okay so the answer is b that is sulfamethoxazole 20 and trimethoprim 1 identify the incorrect statement regarding clavulanic acid clavulanic acid is a beta lactamase inhibitor it is a progressive and suicidal inhibitor okay it is having no antimicrobial action yes the clavulanic acid itself is not having any antimicrobial action but when it is combined with the penicillin which is susceptible to the penicillinase then uh, the combination is having an uh, added antimicrobial spectrum okay
and it is having significant gastrointestinal adverse effect especially in children yes true so the only option remains b but that also seems to be correct it is available as a fixed dose combination with penicillin fine but not with ampicillin it is with amoxicillin okay so amoxicillin 500 mg and clavulanic acid 125 mg that is available and the correct option is b then match the following here there are certain properties that are given of the amino glycosides and you have to select the appropriate agent for that property that is anti tubercular action widest spectrum action most efficacious against pseudomonas and highly toxic for systemic use so used only topically and the agents are tobramycin amikacin neomycin and streptomycin now you all know that the streptomycin is the first agent to be discovered in the tuberculosis even though nowadays it is not preferred not included in first line also but anti tubercular agent is streptomycin yes amikacin is having the widest spectrum emits all amino glycoside antimicrobials the agent that is most effective against pseudomonas is tobramycin and there are certain amino glycosides which are very effective but they are highly toxic to you cannot use this agent systemically and these are the neomycin framycetin okay so these are the correct matchings okay chances of occurrence of super infection is maximal with now super infection is maximal with the broad spectrum antibiotic so here you have to select the broad spectrum agent penicillin g no it is not a broad spectrum it is having a narrow spectrum gentamicin no it is amino glycoside again primarily acting against gram negative and anaerobes only ah uh, sorry and anaerobes only ciprofloxacin it is a first generation fluoroquinolone acting pri primarily or more against the gram negative organism and tetracycline yes it is a broad spectrum antibiotic and that's why the occurrence of super infection is maximum with tetracycline followings are the adverse effects of vancomycin vancomycin is a cell wall synthesis inhibitor agent and it is the drug of choice for mrsa methicillin resistant staph aureus but it is having a relatively narrow margin of safety it can cause concentration dependent low deafness it is <clears throat> eliminated by the kidney and like amino glycoside it causes autotoxicity and nephrotoxicity there is a one another adverse effect even though not relevant to this mcq but i would like to highlight that it when it when it is given it releases the histamine and causes allergic reactions that is known as a red man syndrome so the only option is it is not uh, eliminated through the liver that is one and it is not causing any type of hepatic damage too in a routine therapeutic dose and that's why the answer is hepatotoxicity common properties of the amino glycosides are following except amino glycosides are highly ionized in the solution they are having only extracellular distribution they are primarily eliminated unchanged through the glomerular filtration and hence the dosages are adjusted according to the creatinine clearance then these these drugs they cannot cross the blood brain barrier because of their chemical properties but but cross resistance means when you give the one agent then there is a development of the resistance the same resistance occurs to the other agent even before that agent is given here it is there but it is not complete it is partial so the um, option will be incorrect statement will be complete cross resistance among them macrolide preferred for the treatment of toxoplasmosis and prevention of recurrent abortion is one is the <coughs> roxithromycin telithromycin spiramycin and azithromycin 
Now the spiramycin is the agent which is used for the treatment of the toxoplasmosis which is responsible for the recurrent abortion and it is the preferred macrolide agent. So the answer is spiramycin. Which of the following macrolides leads to ventricular arrhythmia with concurrent administration of cesapride? So now the cesapride and mozapride these are prokinetic agents and they are having one important adverse effect that is QT prolongation and that is more with when you give the other agents which inhibits the CYP3A4 enzyme and these agents are especially the macrolides and in macrolides erythromycin, clarithromycin, telithromycin okay but not azithromycin so he but here the options are erythro, clarithro and telithromycin so the correct answer is D all of the above identify the correct statement regarding the TGA cyclin TGA cyclin is a broad spectrum a newer tetracycline group of the drug it is having a very poor oral absorption and it is given by the parenteral root but not by the intramuscular it is given by the slow intravenous infusion okay it is primarily renal el elimination and dosage adjustments no it is incorrect it is eliminated in the bile no cross resistance is seen with the other tetracycline agent yes very true this is the biggest advantage because the main problem with the tetracycline group is that nowadays the majority of the organisms have developed resistance but that is not seen with the TK cycline and it is not active against anaerobe again it is wrong it is active against anaerobe so the correct statement is no cross resistance is seen with other tetracycline agent identify the correct statement regarding cephalosporins first generation agents are effective against gram negative i am not going to read all these options but here the options are related to the generations and the spectrum antimicrobial spectrum now here i want to clarify that first generations are primarily effective against gram positive second gram positive and somewhat gram negative third generation exclusively gram negative and fourth generations they are effective against the notorious hospital acquired infections and related organisms so here the correct option is third generation agents are effective against gram negative organism drug of choice for multi drug resistant typhoid fever is now the options are cotrimoxazole, septriaxone, ampicillin and ciprofloxacin. For the treatment of the typhoid fever, if we uh, go chronologically, first and foremost the chloramphenicol is developed, uh, chloramphenicol was developed and the resistance, nowadays complete cause resistance, then cotrimoxazole again resistance, ampicillin again resistance and till before 10 years ciprofloxacin was the drug of the choice. Till today it can be used but nowadays there are many cases of resistance to the ciprofloxacin is also developed and that is known as a multi-drug resistant typhoid fever. For that we have to go for a third generation cephalosporin that is septriaxone. Anti-pseudomonal penicillin is it means the penicillin which is effective against pseudomonas. Okay, amoxicillin, bacampicillin, carbencillin and clavulinic acid. Clavulinic acid is not a penicillin, so it come out of our the race. Now, ampicillin, bacampicillin and carbencillin, these all are extended spectrum penicillin. But, but amidst all these, the agents that is effective against pseudomonas is carbencillin and ticarcillin. So, the answer is carbencillin. Arrange the following penicillin preparations in ascending order according to their duration of action. So, these are the, I am not going to read out this. But you all know that the penicillin G is it is having the shortest duration of action. So, you have to select between B and C. So, first will be the shortest duration, then you have to gradually increase the duration. Fine. 
now you all know that the benzathin penicillin okay it is having the longest duration and that's why it is given 3 or 4 weekly means once a month for the prophylaxis of rheumatic fever now procaine is added to the penicillin to increase the duration of action and fortified procaine means the penicillin g plus procaine penicillin so the option is c but if 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 the fortified procaine it the it is uh, meant for the purpose that if you want the immediate onset and along with the longer duration then both this purpose can be solved with fortified procaine so according to this the ideal if you compare the duration of action then more or less this procaine and fortified procaine will be same still the c is the correct option which of the following is not an advantage of second generation fluoroquinolone over first generation that is effective against gram positive organism effective against anaerobes effective against gram negative organism and longer duration first generation fluoroquinolones are ciprofloxacin ofloxacin pefloxacin norfloxacin second generations are levofloxacin sparfloxacin getifloxacin moxifloxacin they are developed and their additional advantages are obviously they are developed after first generation but they are having better uh, stability better pharmacokinetic profile extended spectrum first generation are effective against gram negative while the second generations they are effective against gram positive as well as anaerobes but obviously if you want to focus on the gram negative first generations are effective more and that's why that is not an advantage so the option c is the correct answer which of the following is the rational indication for chemo profile laxis that is neonates after prolonged delivery mother for the prevention of postpartum infection healthcare worker exposed to needle stick injury with the hiv positive individual and all of the above now the chemo profile axis means the develop prevention of the development of infection now it must be in a special circumstances because otherwise the irrational use will lead to the development of bacterial drug resistance so neonates after prolonged delivery if you follow the standard operative guidelines then there is a no need mothers for the prevention of postpartum infection obviously not required so the correct option is yes here the healthcare worker it is exposed to the needle stick injury with the hiv positive individual so you have to give the anti hiv prophylaxis for the prevention of hiv infection to the healthcare worker so the option is c so this is all about the explanation of mcqs you can write your comment in the comment section okay thank you very much